Okay, welcome to my channel, guys. So you all know I'm Courtney, and I normally post faith-based content. And I have my two sisters here today, Imani and Kiara, and they are fellow seminary students with me. So today we are going to be talking about our experience in seminary and answering tons of questions because we know that you all have them, especially if you're interested in going to a seminary yourself. So let's hop right in. Guys. All right. Okay. Um, so first, we'll start with you, Imani. What was your experience that brought you here to seminary? Like, why'd you want to come and why'd you choose wherever we go? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what made me come is really just I had a experience with the Lord. Yeah. And he said, you are to be a scholar of my word. You know, teaching and spread it to the masses. And I'm like, what does that look like? I need to be trained for this. I grew up in the church, but... And I, I didn't grow up in a seminary, and so I'm like, I need yeah. to be trained for this. You talking about be a scholar, and so I just started studying the word on my own. Thought, you know, we could self, we could self teach yep. a couple things. <laughs> <laughs> then I was like, no, I need more structure than this. Yeah. And I actually started looking at schools during 2020, like mid COVID. Mm, and at the time, there was only well, I was in between this school and another school in North Carolina, and the other school was not doing in person visits. This school was. And so wow. I had the opportunity to come here in person. Although the other school blew me out of the water with their virtual presentation. And if we was just going off of virtual, I would have went there, but I had the opportunity wow. to come here. And again, I felt the Holy Spirit speak and say, this is where you're supposed to be. And that Look at that. the Lord. Look at that. Because she's from North Carolina, so it would have been a little bit more comfortable to stay there. And um, you never would have met your fiance. Yeah. <laughs> come on now. Follow the Lord. Follow the Lord. God bless you. And then what about you, Kira? Um, similar to Moni, it was just like a call from the Lord. I think that early on um, in my ministry, uh, I want to say career, but <laughs> ministry career, yeah. um, it just became evident in the type of giftings and interests that the Lord gave me. And it was just confirmed by uh, my community. I really didn't want to go to seminary. Um, I grew up in a church where you had to go to seminary to be a mm. minister or a pastor. However, it was usually people in their lives that was like a second career choice. So I've only seen like people, nobody probably under the age of 40 go to seminary. So okay. I'm like, okay, I'm fresh out of undergrad and God, you want me to go to seminary? Like, yeah, yeah. I have no framework for this, but. Was it women that you saw or was it men? It was both. It was, yeah. it was both, um, uh -huh. which was encouraging. I didn't realize that a lot of people didn't have that experience, but I've yeah. seen women um, in a variety of roles growing up. So, so seminary good. was something I was familiar with, just not for me, fresh yeah. out of undergrad. What about you, Imani? Like, see, did you see both in your church? <clears throat> or? In that's my a big church? Thing. In my yeah. church, no. Mm -hmm. Not going to school, yeah. but my pastor does let women teach, okay, especially from the pulpit. And yeah. so we have deacon, we have women deacons. Oh wow! And I also had the opportunity of watching my mom go to Liberty yeah. while I was in high school, and she was like in her fifties. So yeah, Let go girl. I had, I had the opportunity <laughs> to watch that up close and personal. But other than that, I don't know any women that went to seminary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I think like there's this idea about seminary before you go. Like I've had people ask me crazy questions like. What is seminary? Is it an actual degree? Like, do you get a real master? <laughs> ah, is it like Bible yeah. study? <laughs> like, it's not like Bible study. No. Yeah. It's not Bible study. It's not. It's, it's not so how would y'all describe it? Like, if you try to describe it to someone who's interested in going, would you describe it like a Bible study on steroids? Or like, wow. What's the structure like? What do you study? Y'all study everything. Well, I say, so we study a lot. They're in a different oh, program than yeah. me, so. You know what it is? <laughs> it's hard to put into words. Yeah. I would just say um, it's a systemization mm -hmm. of uh, theological concepts, mm -hmm. the languages, um, biblical exposition, which is the closest thing to Bible study, I would say. Yeah. Um, it's just an in depth um, academic look at the word of God and it is a different perspective because we are in an academic setting yeah. and it is a big change and I can probably speak for all of us it's an adjustment coming from churches and Bible studies yeah. and then now 
scripture looking at it in a more in-depth way and being graded on it now your grade obviously doesn't determine your worth but it also Mm -hmm. determines the level of effort you're going to put into this because you're being graded and paid to be here so um, it's a it's a unique experience but it's good good. yeah yeah i would just say like so if if you're looking for kind of like what classes do you take and things like that like i'm in a different program they're in a more rigorous long-term program praise the lord for my sisters pray for them (laughs) heavily heavily heavily. yes so they're learning the languages which are greek and hebrew if you are unfamiliar um and then we learn church history um the i'm like how do you describe systemic or is it systematic systematic theology systematic theology i mean that encompasses church history and yes the church fathers and you know what people have believed and the different doctrines like i don't think that i had an awareness of doctrines before i came here like not that terminology yes definitely not the terminology like yeah maybe some doctrines on the trinity and whatnot but definitely not the terminology. i think that was real hazy for me like yeah i don't know yeah it was just stuff you believed and you start to realize you didn't know why. It, it, it starts to sound that when you say that you can't directly find it in scripture like you're not mm-hmm. going to find here is the trinity but the trinity is in scripture right it is affirmed by scripture yes. <laughs> it is orthodox view but when you start to get into church history and doctrines and what mm-hmm. the church has believed you can see a historical viewpoint of the faith that you have which yeah. is actually encouraging because people have been having discussions. Yeah. Some of the same discussions people are having now, but they're not aware of church history. And, yes. You know, people like us are going to learn it so we can, you know, talk to them about it. It's like, oh, no, they've already had this conversation before. This is this is, this is it. So it's right. very helpful to know the history. So good. So good. Another question I have for you all is a lot of people say that seminary is where faith goes to die. A lot of people don't believe in seminary <laughs> training because like, it's like all faith, all Holy Spirit. You don't need to go study. So, like, is seminary where faith goes to die? What has been your experience with that? <laughs> I, so, I believe that if your faith is, if it's rooted in terminologies or mm-hmm. culturistic things, mm. Mm, and things that your grandmama and them told you. Oh, Lord. When you get to seminary, your faith is very likely to die. It's mm-hmm. But if your, faith, if your faith is really rooted in the one true God, mm-hmm. some scary. things you just have to be okay with, like, God, okay, this is your word. At the end of the day, it's truth. Yes. Oh, that's so and good. Whatever, whatever it says, I need to reorient in my mind. Yes. I need to reconstruct my mind to trust your word mm-hmm. not to trust my grandma look we love them yeah but yeah. grandma may not always have it right even yes. some of the even some of the, the theologians we listen to today they don't some people disagree yeah. on stuff that everybody doesn't yeah. have it all right but at the end of the day if, if your faith is truly rooted in god himself mm-hmm. it'll survive oh that's so oh. good that's so good Ooh, a word i know I'm like, oh, god. <laughs> that was good because i preaching. experienced that myself one of yeah. the first truths that I mm. was the fact that in, I think it was in a systematic theology class where there are things that seem like they contradict one another. It's inerrant, but it like, seems like there are some things that may contradict each other. Yes, right. So like, what do you mean? Right. What do you mean? Everything's yeah. not. Everything's not true, or however they worded it. But yeah. it's like at the end of the day, you got to get to the root of what they're like. Understand what they're actually saying. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And again, like you have to trust that. Your God is true. Like his word is true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's so good. That is good. I think I had a similar experience. Like my first semester here, like we were talking earlier and I'm like, I found like, I finally feel like I have my footing enough to even make a video like this because (laughs) my first semester, it was just a shock of like, I can't believe I didn't know so much of this. I can't believe that some of the things that I have been taught are wrong. And I've been calling myself a Christian my entire life like how did i get through life knowing this look like it just felt it was like wow i'm questioning my whole identity (laughs) but i did come to a moment where i was like but but i believe you lord and i do believe this word and so it was like you get to a point where you're like i'm just gonna trust you and i'm gonna continue in this journey i'm gonna continue studying and i believe your word in its entirety 
right. and not what the culture says yeah. or, you know, the different agendas that different pastors may have had that weren't biblical at all. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that was really good. That was good. That was good. good. So when you first came to seminary, did you know exactly what you wanted to do? We'll start with you here. <laughs> did you know what you wanted to do? And um, how has that shifted? Do you know now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I know that I was called and I know that God called me to be obedient to that call. Um, I remember we're talking about like, do we need a concrete plan? Yeah. The concrete plan in any spectrum of your life when the Lord calls you to something is being obedient. Yeah. Sometimes we get so caught up on the way that things should look, the way that we think they're going to go, having a clear picture. I don't know, but I do know that the Lord is equipping me and giving me tools for whatever he's calling me yeah. to do. And I learned um, some lessons. Um, when you say things have shifted, I've learned in this season. Like, disobedience isn't just doing, isn't, isn't just not doing what God called you to do, but doing more than what he called you to do. Ooh. So it's like, while I'm here in seminary, like, I need to be here in seminary. Like, I don't need to be trying to do all these other things like those times will come those are good things yeah but i learned that way of disobedience the hard way and praise god for grace yeah don't do more than what he's called you to yeah. do knowing that seminary is a season yeah. Yeah. it yeah. is a season unless you want to be here and get three degrees <laughs> some people some been people here since be before i was born they've been a career student <laughs> We're here for a season. <laughs> We're here for a season. So just being obedient to the Lord yeah. in a season and knowing that he's not equipping you just for you. This is yes. for the entire body. Yes, so. that's so good. I don't really know, but that's I'm okay. sure he'll reveal it. It'll happen. What about you? What was the question again? I, so, um, did you know what you wanted to do when you came to seminary? Do you think it's important <clears throat> if someone's watching and they're like, uh, I don't necessarily want to be a pastor. I don't want to be a preacher. I don't want to, like, do you think they need to have a definite um, role in mind? Or is it okay for you to come without that role in mind? Did you have one in mind? I did. I still do. Yeah, you really, yeah, yeah, she, yeah, she, yeah. <laughs> I do. But my thing, what I'm dealing with, mm -hmm. what the Lord is, is helping me walk through, yeah. is knowing what you're going to do, but it's not your time yet. Mm. It's not. It's not time for that yet. It takes so, a lot of. Uh, what, what are you doing? You know, you, you, yeah. like you said, you still have to be obedient to what God has called you to right now. Mm -hmm. He didn't give you that yet. It's yeah. not time for that yet. But this is now. This yeah. is your present time, and you need to be obedient in the now. And so that's been my. I would call it a struggle because it last semester, yeah. first semester it was. I'm like God, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> like you didn't wire me up. Sit, let me loose now. Yeah. He <laughs> yeah. was like, no. I'm still going to hold you here. While your little feet is running, I'm still going to hold you. Oh, God. And so you don't have to know what exactly it is you'll be doing mm -hmm. for your vocation, for your career, before you come here. Mm -hmm. As long as you believe that the Lord has called you here, mm -hmm. yeah, he will flush the rest of it out. Like, he is faithful. He's an on-time yeah. God. He's going to do his part. And so just continue to trust his timing mm -hmm. and his plan more than yours. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's important too, to mention like we are students who have a degree program who are graduating with concentrations and things like mm -hmm. that. But there are people here that we see as well that are lay people that have jobs that are just like, I'm going to use this extra hour that I have to sit in on a class, like maybe not even being graded for it, maybe not in a degree, a degree program. Or people who are just like, I'm online, I'm across the country, but I just want, I need to learn the word. Yeah, and yeah. so it's a place where you can just learn a better understanding of God's word. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily, I mean, we do hope to have ministry roles, but that's not necessarily the case for everybody who comes here. Can I add something else? Go ahead. Yeah. Not knowing, it, I think it is, it's helpful when you know what you want to do because yeah. you can then pick a degree that better tailors what it is that right. you want That's to do. True. Right. Yeah. But even if you don't know and you, you're not for sure if I should go invest my life, because can we talk about how it's an investment? It is an yeah, investment. It's an investment. <laughs> I'm not sure if I need to go invest my life in seminary, but yeah. if not, all of seminaries have different programs where you can do online free mm -hmm. courses. Yeah. 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 You get the same information, just less grades. Yeah. 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 Speaking of other seminaries, <laughs> Kiara has been to another seminary. So, what was your experience like? Like the differences and um, 
advantages that you feel maybe you feel like it's an advantage to have two different outlooks or not you know what do you think so (laughs) going to two different seminaries has been a blessing my first seminary there was nothing wrong with it Um, I was just going through some life changes and the Lord presented me an opportunity to move out of state so I'm like let's do it let's switch seminaries Um, but my first seminary it was very different than the one we're at now Mm -hmm. And I think that's very encouraging to know that even though you go to one seminary, like every seminary, Loki thinks they're the best seminary. Yeah. But having the two different experiences, you realize that you can be a lifelong learner from other people in other places. Your school does not have it all figured out. Yeah. Now, some schools have different um, concentrations and things like that. And I would like to say all seminaries are built the same, but... No. Um, I, I've had the opportunity to go to two great ones, but I would say do your research. Yes. Do your research. Sure. Um, the first seminary I went to was the closest one to me. I wanted to do all, pers- um, all in-person classes, mm-hmm. but then the pandemic hit, so yeah. that was funny because I did it all on Zoom anyway. But um, crazy. they were both great schools. Um, mm-hmm. I would say the one that I went to had a great emphasis on history, church history. Mm-hmm. I had a, a diverse church history um, mm-hmm. curriculum. Yeah. And then here, where we're at now, has a great languages and biblical exposition program. Mm-hmm. So um, having the experience of going to two seminaries is very humbling. Um, it shows you that you don't have it all figured out and you can learn from other people in other um, sectors of Christianity. Yeah. And it has been like an amazing honor to be able to say I have two experiences. That's so good. That's so good. That's really it. But my one thing I do want to like give them because I feel like we kind of touched on it. But like, so when you were in your researching process, like, what is it important to even look for for someone who's like, I don't even know, what, like, what I look up, like, yeah, what what's important to look into? <laughs> the type of people that graduated from the school you went to, first of all, <laughs> I think, and, and I don't. Mean Everyone to say does like that. that though, but. <laughs> what does their ministry look like and I mean that it the school doesn't determine everything because I mean there's you can go to any school it doesn't really a degree doesn't determine your character Mm -hmm. but um looking at that and also do what do they emphasize like are they teaching the word because there's some there's some liberal seminaries and then there are some conservative seminaries Mm -hmm. and so that's important to look into and conservative because I we use those terms all the time and Mm -hmm. I think the culture kind of gets them like it's a completely different meaning but liberal would mean like you're liberal with the bible and so like things can be read as symbolic or allegorical opposed to like the literal meaning and sticking to the inerrancy or the inspiration of scripture, um, which is like more on the conservative side. (laughs) So know know, know those things. (laughs) I had seen that there are some universities with programs that are like, you take a new, New Testament class and an Old Testament class. Where here, like there are seminaries where it's like, you actually walk through every single book of the Bible. So I think that's really important to know, too. Mm-hmm. And then, like, what is it? We have to agree to a statement. Yes. Yeah, yeah. A lot of schools have that, too. Um, mm-hmm. Doctrinal statements for the school, that there's certain things um, that in order to go to the school that you have to agree, agree with. But there's also yeah. um, another tier that even if you go to the school, you don't have to agree with these things, but just knowing that your professors are coming from this viewpoint. Yeah. So when you're learning things and it's like, hey, it sounds like you're saying this, it's because they do think that. Yeah. They may not say that you have to believe it. Sometimes it's giving that they think you have to believe that. Yeah. But you don't necessarily <laughs> have to fully agree. And I think it also teaches you a level of maturity of how yeah. to interact with people that may not agree on everything. Yeah. So. But if you disagree with everything in the school statement, <laughs> you shouldn't go. No. So, so read it beforehand. Like, yes. know what they believe yeah. and what they teach. You know, you can get by on a few, but if it's like, oh, this is yeah. a, what, what are they talking about? Then don't go. It's kind of like picking a church or going to a church because oh, yeah. that's another thing we've had to do being yes, out, out here in a, new, in a new state. But if you go to a church's website and they believe in all these things that, that contradict what you believe when you read your Bible. Yeah. That's going to be problematic if you go to, like, that. that's what that church culture is going to look like. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so when you're researching your school and you're reading these things on their website or you're reading from, uh, like, pieces, written pieces or maybe things that people have published that go there or that are leaders at that school, that's going to be the culture of that school. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
So is there anything that you experienced when you came here that surprised or shocked you? You go first. Okay, I'll go first. Okay. Well, I got shocked. Like, <laughs> of course she went into the cancer. I got shocked. She's like, wait, hold on. Make sure you mention this. <laughs> well, I'm meeting my fiance here. Yeah. It's really crazy though. Two for two. Two for two. Yeah. It's, it's a whole vast story, but yeah. I just I wasn't expecting it. I mean, look and, at the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> so we met at the beginning of 2021. Mm-hmm. We're getting married in 2023. Yeah. Wasn't expecting that at all. And so just navigating through, you want to talk about something, navigating through like unhealthy relationship mm. issues while you're in seminary. We can make another video. Like working <laughs> through your faith and the doctrines. It's, it was a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah. I, look, I've been praying alongside you. Yes. Yeah. It's been beautiful to see both of them. Yes. Go yes. through that experience. Oh, just love it. So beautiful. So that that's one thing that's shocking. You just never know. When the Lord sends you somewhere, you just never really know what's there waiting for you. Mm-hmm. And you never know who you're going to meet. And so another yeah. nice piece of it, um, like surprising in a positive way, is just the different connections that you can make with people. And you, just, oh, yeah. you just don't know who's connected to who and mm-hmm. yeah. what door will lead to your next ministry opportunity yeah. or who you can bless through this person. You just mm-hmm. So that's something that's surprising. That's really good. You never know who you're going to see, who you're going to meet. Yeah, I didn't think about that. That's really good. Yeah. How about you, Pierre? Um, I would guess mine is more of a closing thought. Um, kind of going back to the, um, is seminary cemetery where faith goes to die? Yeah. Um, I think seminary is very revealing of where you have your faith place, like Amani mm-hmm. said. It's like, is my faith place in my understanding of Christ or in Christ himself? Because mm-hmm. you are going to find some things that are going to challenge you, but yeah. as long as your faith is placed in the author and finisher of your yeah, faith, yeah, yeah. not the author of your textbook and not your yeah, yeah. professor, yeah, yeah, yeah. you should be good because and I'm like, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm like that ha- I was terrified coming to seminary because I'm like, am I going yeah. to lose my faith? Yeah. Like, is my faith going to die? But if yeah. my faith is in Christ, last time I checked, he's still living. He's still he sitting on the yeah. throne. Yeah. So yes. as long really as my faith is alive. in the one who is alive, yeah. any yeah. challenge that comes to it, um, I can trust in who my faith is truly placed in. And um, that has just been mm-hmm. so relieving to know, like, That's even so y'all be struggling, struggling. Sometimes mm-hmm. we lose to sleep at night. I'm like, oh, Lord, have mercy. I thought this about you. But yeah. we are we are studying the infinite God of the universe. Right. Like, we don't know everything about him. If we did, we didn't need to go to seminary. And you won't be knowing everything. Exactly. Yeah. It's a forever journey. So <laughs> just just trust God and make sure your faith is in him and you will be you will be fine. I think that was a great way to end it. Yeah. That was perfect. All right, guys. So if you all have any more questions, make sure you drop them below and make sure that you subscribe to my channel so that you do not miss next video. Bye. Bye. <laughs>